Well, hey, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name's Kenneth Bocor, your host. How you doing? Glad to have you here for episode 51. I got a special episode. I've got a couple of days use of the 2019 Kia Niro EV, and I'm really excited to be driving this car. I've had it for just half a day already, and I'm excited. Uh, so let me give you a quick overview on some of the specs and some of the features of this vehicle. Before I do that, I just want to do a quick shout out to Kia Canada. Thank you very much for loaning me this uh, press car to uh, review for a couple of days. Want to stress, no compensation was given to me, just the use of this vehicle for a couple of days. Want to thank them very much. Now the styling of the Nero, I, I guess what I'll say about this car is that it's normal. It's a normal looking vehicle. Looks just like the other Nero platforms or Nero derivatives in that product family. And I think that's a good thing because it, some EV people don't want to stand out. You know, like the Gen 1 Leafs was polarizing, the Mitsubishi IMEV, all this kind of stuff. People see Teslas, they stand out, they, they recognize Teslas now. A lot of people just want to kind of blend in. And you know, they, they, like the second gen Leaf, the Nero, the Ionic, a lot of the Kona, a lot of these other vehicles, they just want to blend in. Uh, and that's, I think, what this vehicle gives you in spades. It really does uh, fit in very nicely. Nobody's staring at you. Nobody's noticing that it's electric until you quietly go by. Now the Nero shares the platform with Hyundai's Ionic, and if you didn't know, uh, Hyundai uh, owns 51%, I believe, or a majority share of Kia, so they're the parent company. So Kia and Hyundai share a lot of manufacturing, a lot of parts and all that good stuff. Now this vehicle is made in the same plant as the Kona. There's one plant in South Korea where these are, the, these are uh, built and shipped around the world globally, hence one of the reasons that there's a constraint problem on those, because uh, that's the most probably feedback that I hear about the Nero is it's a fantastic vehicle, but it's hard to get one. And I know it's only in certain states in the US, uh, a dozen or so states. It's across Canada, but in short supply. In other areas, it's short supply. But I know in speaking with Kia today, they mentioned that they are taking steps to try to ramp up production and they hope to get more numbers coming soon. Now, well, the other differentiator between the, uh, from the Kona, uh, not only because it uses, the Nero uses a different platform, is that they also, um, Kia has chosen a different battery supplier than Hyundai has. Hyundai is using LG Chem in the Kona. The Nero is using SK Innovation cells for its battery pack. Now, this pack is a 64 kilowatt hour battery pack, which is pretty big. It's in that 60 hour, 60 kilowatt hour club, as I called it before, for like uh, cars like the Leaf Plus and others. Uh, it does have active thermal management, so it is liquid cooled and heated as well for the winter time. And, uh, and the system also uh, cools the electronics and the motors, the power electronics and the motors for the vehicle. Now, I mentioned the Nero, the Nero is based on the Ionic platform, which gives it a 106.3 wheelbase, inch wheelbase, and overall length of 172.2 inches. You can do the math for metric if you'd like. And that kind of shows in the interior cabin. That's one of the reasons I picked the Nero as my all-electric car of the year for 2019, because that little extra six inches, you know, in a, in a back a rear seat is a lot for people. Um, and that makes a big difference when you factor that into over our cargo volume and just interior your volume size uh, that makes a big difference in that and that's one of the reasons I think this hits the sweet spot. Now because the battery pack is 64 kilowatts it's a one, just over a thousand pounds in weight but because it's on the floor it gives you that great uh, center of gravity and the, of course the cabin still feels pretty large. Kia had to, to accommodate the battery pack into a platform that's traditionally been for ice fee and then into plug-in hybrid and now, of course, full uh, electric vehicles. They've had to raise and tweak the suspension height by just over half an inch to accommodate that battery pack. Now that also required a retuning of the suspension um, and just to accommodate that weight and everything. Now, of course, this is not a performance vehicle, so don't get your hopes that this is gonna be doing, uh, you know, pulling uh, so many Gs and turns and things like that. It's not, but it really does feel for pretty quick and it, it's, it's nice and fluid as the EVs are. Now, just under 72 inches wide, the Nero is nice and easy to park in, in normal parking spots and to move around parking lots in tight situations. That's why this thing is doing well in Europe and other countries where they have narrow streets. Now, because that width isn't that huge, it is a five passenger, will fit five in a pinch, but ideally four passengers will be most comfortable in this vehicle. Now the motor on this vehicle pumps out 201 horsepower equivalent, 291 pound-feet of torque, and it's torque, as you know, folks, that gets you off the line and gets you going, and that's what matters the most. More than ample enough torque uh, for this vehicle, even when you fill it with people and stuff, it's got plenty of give up and go. Now that combination of torque and horsepower gets you from zero to 62 or zero to 100K in about 7.8 seconds. That seems to be the average in that 60 kilowatt hour club. 
Nero EV has three driving modes. I'll show you on the, the interior when I go through that in a minute. Um, normal, Sport, Eco, and Eco Plus. So it's nice to be able to have that selection. Like I said earlier, I've been driving this thing in Eco all day from uh, downtown Toronto and back. Had some meetings to go to, and it's plenty powerful, even with the air conditioning running, as it's been uh, 32 degrees C today with some humidity. So I've had to keep the AC going all day to stay cool. Um, it's been really, really quick. Now, one thing I did notice about this vehicle when I compare it to the Leaf, because I'm very, of course, in touch with the Leaf because I drive it every day as my car, is that this is noisier. So this would probably be, I guess, in the middle of the range from a noise. I don't have a decibel reading or anything like that. You can go on the web and find that stuff. But I did find the noise to be a little louder than my Leaf is, even at highway speeds. A little bit more wind noise and more road noise coming through. Now, it could be the tires. Uh, could be something to do with that. I don't know because you can hear the motor whine a bit on this. Uh, it does have that, a distinct spaceship type of sound when you're going uh, 20 kilometers or less, less uh, for slow speed so pedestrians can hear you creeping up on them. It has a kind of a UFO sounding sound. But other than that, I did. you can hear the motor whine both on acceleration and on regenerative braking. But it doesn't take you, it does, it's not distracting or over, overbearing from a sound perspective. Has a built in 7.2 kilowatt onboard charger for level two charging. Uh, so you can get to, from zero to 100 in about nine and a half hours using the level two. And if you go to a 100 kilowatt charger, you can get zero to 80% in about uh, 45 minutes to an hour, let's say closer to an hour. If it's a 50 kilowatt DC, CCS combo is what it uses from a fast charging, that'll get you about an hour and 15 minutes or so at 50 kilowatts. Now the Nero has pretty well all the safety features that most vehicles have today, which is nice. But safety features, you've got your advanced smart cruise control, of course, your lane keeping assist, driver attention alert, uh, blind spot retention uh, detection system, excuse me, which I think blind spot monitoring at least should be standard coming up now that we've got AEB and this has emergency braking as well in it. Um, rear cross traffic alert is a nice feature. Front and rear parking sensors, that's one thing I do miss on the Leaf. You get those audible warnings when you're getting close to, to objects. Uh, you get the visual backup camera, of course, on a nice big screen, 8 inch LCD. There's an app for that, and of course, Kia does supply a mobile app for your for your smartphones so that you can precondition, start charging, stop charging, all that good stuff. Uh, you can also, it does support Apple CarPlay and Android Auto for all the functions there. Um, I found, and I'll go through the dash in a, in a sec, you'll see that I found the nav to be really, really good. Um, it's, it's actually so good, I probably would never even use Apple, uh, you know, any of the, the, the apps that are on my iPhone or my smartphone for, for integration for nav anyway. The sound is excellent. It's a Harman Kardon's stereo system on this, which blew my ears at, at not even halfway. Um, it has wireless charging, and that's something I'll show you in a sec there and when I go through the interior, and I'll show you the LCD clusters. Uh, leather seats are nice. The active cooling was really nice, uh, putting that cooling feature on. A lot of vehicles in this price class don't have cool, it, cool seats. They just have heated seats are standard. And on a day like today, when it's 35 degrees Celsius in humidity, uh, boy, I tell you, even running some air conditioning, I had those seats on cool, and it was uh, cooling me very, very nice. It has heated seats, of course, and steering wheel for the winter times. Safety, it has has uh, multiple airbags like all vehicles now with a high strength steel safety cage. Autonomous emergency braking, as I mentioned, is standard. TPMS is standard. And vehicle stability control management system seems to be traction control is pretty well standard on everything nowadays. So this is a front wheel drive vehicle, uh, which I think most of the vehicles in this class are in that compact SUV. Um, but it has, uh, you know, again, the range 385 kilometers or 240 mile range on that battery pack. Um, the gentleman that I picked this up from said that, you know, it's been showing over 400 kilometers at 100% easy. He said some guys were getting 405, 410 kilometers out of this thing. So I don't know if I'll be, I'll, I won't get a chance to actually push the range. There's lots of videos on range out there, but it wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, to see close to those range and ideal, ideal conditions. So that's an overview in the specs. Let me go inside, show you the dash, show you the interior layout, some of the features there, and then we'll get to driving it. Hi guys, let me walk through the uh, displays here in the Kia Nero EV. Uh, before I do that, let me just quickly sh uh, highlight some of the functions that I've discovered in my time of playing with this car for a couple of days. One of the things I do like in a upscale vehicle, if you want to call that, because at a price point of $55,000 Canadian, I would consider that upscale, is memory seating conditions. And if we look in the driver's door here, we see two memory seating uh, uh, settings. So you can set it for one or two, two different drivers. 
Other thing that I noticed here is the foldable mirrors. Now, it's one thing that the uh, cars like the Leaf and others have in Europe, but we don't have here in North America is folding mirrors. And there's a little button here on the on the uh, door panel, and it's uh, if you click it to the left, then what that means is that the mirrors will not fold when you shut the car off and, and arm the security and leave the car. If you leave it in the middle, it's an auto setting. What that means is that the mirrors will fold in when you lock the car, when you arm the car after you shut it off. And if you press this, if I go all the way to the right, then what will happen is you'll see that the mirrors will fold in. So if you're going through somewhere a little tight or you want to just make sure that you don't forget to fold those in if you're parking in a tight spot, it's nice to have the manual button for that. One other little uh, handy feature is auto up and down for both the driver and the passenger windows. Most manufacturers just give it to you in the driver's side. Uh, usually an auto down is pretty standard now. Auto up is not with everybody, but it's nice to see that in the Nero. Now over here we have our buttons for traction control on and off, for lane keep assist on and off, uh, for your parking assist um, sounds and sensors, of course, sorry, blind spot to monitoring sensors, and then of course for your if you have a timer or if you're just putting this on auto charge, if you've set something up there. Another thing I like about this is the footwell. Um, one thing I've mentioned in the Leaf and some of the other cars is that the, the front wheels tend to come into the passenger compartment of the vehicle and limit front foot space. And uh, this one, as you can see, is quite wide. I can get my foot all the way across, um, not just uh, having to keep it in center like some of the other cars. Love the metal touch on the pedals as well. For steering wheels, and you can see we have full uh, amount of steering wheel controls, and I'll go through some of the menus, which you've got your cruise control, which can be standard cruise or your adaptive uh, cruise control settings, different toggle buttons for that. They have a really nice feel to them. The, the uh, uh, steering wheel itself has a really nice feel to it. It's uh, wrapped, stitch is very nice. Um, it's just you know great to see the, the quality in something of this price point, even with some of the finishes. Uh, before I get to some of the controls and the menus, uh, pretty standard layout. Now, one thing I like about the, the Nero is that everything, I jumped into this car without reading a manual, without even looking at anything, and I was able to figure out all the controls very, very quickly. It's very intuitive because it's pretty well like any other car you get into. Uh, and that's one thing I liked that Kia did versus the Hyundai Kona is that they kind of kept it normal from an inside. So it's pretty easy for anybody to get in here and kind of figure out what, what controls are what, pretty intuitive and to kind of get going pretty quickly. You know, I could find radio stations, I could find XM, um, I could, uh, you know, uh, pair my phone, I could set the, I did a trip where I set the nav. All this kind of stuff was really, really easy to do because it's very intuitive and very straightforward. You know, even the controls for heated seats, it's got seat coolers, which is awesome. Today it's a 32 degrees Celsius day with a humidity of about 38 degrees. So I've, I'm inside with the air conditioning on because otherwise I'd be melting in here. Um, so it's got, uh, uh, of course, your, your parking brake, which is electronic, different drive mode selectors. And I've talked about, talked about that a little bit, heating, uh, a steering wheel heater, parking sensors, and all that good stuff. Um, very genuine, uh, generous uh, storage space. Uh, love having the multiple uh, buttons here. You've got uh, charging uh, uh, as well for USB charging and for 12 volt if you have an accessory. Uh, one thing that I did not know until I got the vehicle and started driving is that this has a um, uh, wireless charging for phones that support that. So with my iPhone here, all I do is I just shove it in, in the slot here and if you see that button light up, that means it, it's charging wirelessly. And it's got a little lip on here which kind of keeps the phone in place. Really small touch, but I thought that that was something really, really nice for something you don't see in a car of this type of class. Continue on with storage, good storage space, front pockets, um, nice again touch, feel soft touch to plastics. I won't get into a lot of detail because a lot of people cover it. Good size glove box for your storage needs. All right, so let me start with the binnacle itself here. It's a great uh, system. It's very intuitive, as I mentioned earlier. On the left side, you have your range indicator with your battery charge state uh, in, a, in a, a, a bunch of dots there, dashes. And then below in the middle, you have a, a different computer, which you can change, and I'll walk through that in a sec. And then you have your speedometer and your um, it kind of goes up with your speed basically uh, but this is a very nice menu system uh, some menus have sub menus so on this one with the car uh, you've got kind of like drive info a trip info uh, different averages so far you could reset those of course uh, and energy flow of when you're moving it's uh, dissipating energy when you're slowing down it's recharging using the regenerative braking and some consumption info now one thing it does is it shows a live consumption info uh, so very nice if I go to the next screen 
screen, uh, it's just a straight compass, which is nice to have to find your way through areas. Next screen, this is just showing that the system is off. I'm not using adaptive cruise right now because I'm not moving, so the system is not engaged. Uh, it also has a, a driver tension warnings uh, if it's in standby mode because I'm not driving. The tire TPMS, it's pretty warm, right, as I mentioned today, so the pressure is a little high, and we're back to that system menu. And if I go to the final menu, these are our settings. I won't go through all of them. There's a lot of different user settings. One thing I did want to point out, though, is uh, if I can find that here, I think it's under convenience. Uh, well, one is seat easy access. And what that means is if you engage it, I've got it on normal. What that means is when I shut the car off, the power driver's seat is going to... Uh, it's going to go back to the farthest position just to get in and out of the car much easier. And then when you start the car, it'll put the seat back. So I thought that that was pretty cool. Um, things, I'm not sure what utility mode does, so I don't want to get into that. Uh, you've got your welcome and all that kind of stuff. This, again, to turn on your wireless charging if you have it. Uh, wiper lights displays, just showing when they're activated. Auto rear wiper, um, when you're in reverse, it'll automatically start the wiper. Good in winter conditions when you need to get some snow off and you're reversing out of a parking lot. It's been snowing a bit. That's always nice to have have and then smart regeneration what I've learned about that is that actually will regenerate on the fly it'll auto calculate it but I think having the, the confirmed settings are, are much nicer and icy road warning uh, EVs vehicles give you that when it, the temperatures drop um, one thing I did like is the uh, the turn one touch turn signals. A little pet peeve I have is that most turn signals, when you just do a quick uh, half uh, push of the stock, if you're just doing a lane change, they do three flashes, and I always think that that's not enough. I like to have a little bit more because you you want to start flashing, change your lane, and then you know have time to change the lane and to get into the lane where it, when it stops flashing once you're done in the lane. And I find three flashes just goes by pretty quickly, so I. I love that it has this little unique feature that's the uh, first time I've seen this in quite a long time that you can change it to multiple flashes. I like having five. I think that that works really well, uh, but I thought that that was unique. And of course, a whole bunch of driver assistance, um, which I won't get into. Everything's pretty well active here at this state, but again, easy to use menu system uh, from your straight panel. Now, if I'm going to change driving modes, that's pretty easy. The driving mode button, as I showed you, is on the center console down below next to the drive selector level. Uh, and that's where I push that mode. So you just, I'm in eco. If I want to go into normal mode, uh, that's what that is. And again, it changes all the settings and I'll show you where those settings are in a sec. And then if I want to go into sport mode, it changes there. See how it changes the look of the, of the graphs as well and the color scheme. To, to show what mode you're in and then back to eco now if you want to go into eco plus it says to hold the drive mode button and then it'll go into so if you press the drive mode and hold it now it'll go into eco plus and it's set to limit your speed to 90 kilometers an hour and it shuts off your ventilation system and this is if you're at a critical battery state where you're you're inching your way to try to get somewhere to find a charger and you're trying to conserve every ounce of power uh, eco plus will give you that so it's speed limits and it shuts off the use of at least the AC anyway. Uh, so I'm going to not uh, run that because I'm going to boil in this car being 32 degrees. But um, again, a nice feature that I don't see uh, on other cars. Uh, I don't see that on the Leaf and some of the other vehicles that I've tested. Um, so it's a, just a nice little feature to have. One final look at the steering wheel. You've got your standard stocks for your lights and uh, fog lights and all that good stuff. Auto lights, pretty standard. Intermittent wipers, all that good stuff. And uh, then the, here are the regenerative paddles. So you can uh, increase the regenerative uh, from zero to three. And here you can decrease. So it's just basically on the fly. So here's the main menu screen. I won't go through every option because there's a lot of stuff in here, but I want to focus on a couple of things, uh, especially in the EV settings I thought was pretty cool. As your standard type of fried egg approach, where it shows you your range and a small screen. You can uh, blow up that screen if you want into the sat nav and it shows you your range. I thought that's pretty cool. Nice to have to be able to see. Uh, here's a charge management. So if I want to set charging times, a lot of people are still want to do that. You can either time it for a next departure um, you can set a location-based charging. So let's say you're at home, you want to do a certain type of charge level every time you can do that. You can set minimum and maximum or maximum charge levels as well. And uh, charging current, I don't know what that's going to do. Uh, it doesn't look like it does uh, a whole lot. It just tells you, oh, it tells you what the maximums are here. Uh, if you want to uh, use maximum uh, uh, power pull powers on these chargers or you want to reduce it uh, I guess it just depends again on if you're trying to manage heat now this has active 
uh, cooling, so I don't think that that would be something that I would play with. Uh, but I'll come back to this in a sec because um, uh, eco driving, this just shows you uh, what you've contributed to CO2 emissions and an economy history as well. If you want to go back and see how you did on a certain day, how many kilometers, it actually logs every trip and every on off type of situation. And if you want to um, go into EV settings here, you can do that. There's winter mode. It tells you, of course, um, uh, some of the features about using winter mode. Uh, if you want to enable some warnings, if you get low range and low uh, ranges and what you want to see on a map from an EV route perspective, um, some of the symbols and things that it'll show on the map. Now, again, uh, energy uh, information I thought was really brilliant on this screen. There's a lot of great information. Um, and I know that the, the Hyundai uh, equivalent to this is very detailed as well. Um, but a great when it shows, you know, range with climate control off and all the standard stuff. Um, here it shows DC charging. And now this is where you can set your limit. So if you want to set your limit from a DC charge, let's say when I DC fast charge, I only want to go up to 80% and then shut it off. You can do that there. Press the OK button. It'll set that for home charging or level one, level two charging. You can set the maximums as well. I'm going to leave that to full. All right, so this electri electricity use screen is pretty cool. I was using it while I was driving and because it, it gives you instant readings of how much power is being consumed by the drivetrain, climate control, electronics, and if there's any battery care, like a battery heater as an example, how much that's drawing. So it's pretty cool to see a very intu a very nice energy information screen, one of the main screens you'll go to. There's a very nice uh, intuitive, as you can see, very responsive display here. Um, haven't noticed any software glitches. If there is any, I haven't seen anything like that. Um, again, the satin nav is nice and big you can have day or night mode different things um, uh, you know different information uh, ways to look at the screen 3d views all that kind of good stuff so uh, really nice sat nav I did a route earlier as I mentioned today it was quick it was responsive um, and it uh, kept up with real-time traffic as well showing me roads that were red and all that good stuff all right so I'm in driving the Kia Nero here and um, as you can hear I'm doing a little bit I'm doing under 20 kilometers an hour so it's got that UFO kind of thing going, which is okay. It takes a little while to get used to, but it's not uh, it's not that bad. So like I said, um, I've been driving this for about half a day already, put about 100 kilometers on it. Uh, we've had a hot day, it's still 30 degrees and it's approaching early evening time. Um, but this drives really easy, It's there's nothing to it. It drives like you would think it would drive uh, from an EV perspective. Just get through this roundabout here to head back my other direction. There we go. So I've got some stuff in the car that might rattle around a bit, but other than that, there's no squeaks, rattles, finishing noises, anything like that. It, it's very comfortable, very well built, put together, as you're seen by my interior walkthrough and some of the control features. So it, it's a really nice car. Again, the interior noise is a little louder than my Leaf. It's noticeable to me. I can I can hear that. Again, it could be the tires. Um, you know, noise insulation, it's a heavier vehicle, it's a little bigger vehicle. Uh, so there's a lot of things there, but it's certainly nothing that takes away from the enjoyability of driving this vehicle um, and, uh, and utilizing its functions from, uh, from an everyday, like just get in and go. So this has plenty of torque, as I mentioned, uh, in giving you some of the specs, there's no problem. I, even in eco mode, there's lots of uh, get up and go. Now, one of the things this does have is uh, lane keep assist and warning. Um, different than the Leaf, which has the haptic feedback of vibrating the steering wheel and uh, flashing an alarm, this just has an audible alarm. So if I kind of go out of the lane here, you can hear that. It's telling me that I'm riding the lane, and I can feel the steering wheel trying to push back a bit to uh, right this, right, you know, get out of that that line to get back into the lane. Uh, in this case, I was veering right. It's trying to pull me back a little left. If I was going the other way, it would try to pull me back right. So that's what the, but that's what the. Um, uh, with a lane assist uh, does not just a warning but to try to actually help you um, uh, mild mild corrections obviously um, what you can do so driving is very subjective folks I'm always a little hesitant to kind of give you advice you know on how a car drives and everybody has their own descriptions and it's tight and it's loose and it's this and that you know everybody's different in how they feel the car how, how a car behaves for them and how they respond to the vehicle so it is subjective but what i can tell you you know as i said earlier this is like just driving any normal vehicle you get in and you go you have that instant torque from the that an ev gives you you have the nice low center of gravity so to handle you know road banners are a little bit better i find the suspension in this okay 
It's not luxurious, but it's certainly not as harsh as the Model 3 or some of the other um, EVs that are out there. Um, I find, you know, the Leaf, as an example, has a very nice suspension. Um, it's a very comfortable ride. This is, I would say, pretty close to the Leaf. Might be even a tad better. It's hard, again, it's hard to tell. I went over some pretty bumpy roads in downtown Toronto earlier, and this, this handled them quite fine. So, you know, tires have a, have a makeup there, how the suspension's tuned, all that good stuff. So it can be a little, the feeling can be very subjective. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. Um, you know, I, th I think this car, as I said earlier, and I keep saying it, I just, I can get in in a couple of minutes from scratch, learn how to, you know, learn the controls, learn how to operate some of the features, set things up very quickly and just go. And it's a really easy car to drive, um, handles very well, road manners are great. And uh, again, with the comfort in the room, these seats are nice and comfy. Um, I love having the memory controls as I mentioned earlier. Well, that's kind of a pet peeve of mine when you're paying 50 grand or close to 50 grand or more for a car that you don't have seat memory controls. Um, I think that that's, uh, as you know, 40 grand or more, you should have at least one. Uh, that having two is fantastic. Again, so I think the only negative I would say about this is that the, the noise, the road noise is a little higher than what I have on the Leaf uh, and the wind noise on the highway is a tad higher, but it's nothing that, again, is distraction, distractive from driving or, or causes any concern. One thing I also find about the uh, Nero EV is on the adaptive cruise control, um, it's not as aggressive as some. I, one thing I found about the Leaf is sometimes it will brake, you know, if somebody cuts in front of you, it'll, it'll brake kind of hard or accelerate quick to get back up to speed so you get a little bit of the jerkiness. This is a bit more subtle. You can, it does a little bit of that, but it's not as pronounced as in some of the other vehicles. So they seem to have fine-tuned the adaptive cruise so quite well. All right, guys, well, I'm here at my favorite Milton charger, the only uh, fast charger, the ultra fast charger that we have right now in, in southern Ontario, at least the one that I'm aware of. Um, so I'm here. I try to get the range down as uh, low as I could. I'm at 42 percent. So I'm going to plug it in and see what this thing pulls. This is a 200 kilowatt CCS charger. Uh, my understanding is that the, the Kia Nero should pull up to 100. So let's see what it pulls. All right, guys, so I plugged it in and we're pulling 54 kilowatts right now, according to the uh, display here. I'm trying to see if it might ramp up. Uh, it might be a bit too high to pull the full 100 based on temperatures. Of course, it has an active temperature management system in here. Um, so I've got it set to go to 80%. So it might even have started tapering already at this speed, but it's pulling 54, 55. I'll continue to uh, monitor it. I'll probably go for only 15 minutes or so. This All of a sudden, this spot got really busy as a few people that wanted to come and charge here. So I'll just uh, let it go up to maybe 60% or so and see what see what I can pull. One other thing I wanted to show, uh, show you, and again, these small little things that I'm picking up in this that are quite helpful, is that the Nero, of course, it has your standard uh, sunshades, as you can see. But one of the things I like about it is these come out really long. And in fact, it covers the entire window. And sometimes it can be pretty annoying having that little spot where the sun is. Just when you're on your way home for a drive, you're going in that direction, and that spot's kind of kind of pierce through there. So that's a nice little touch that they've got really full extension visors here for the front um, to get the sun out of you, your eyes and it's actually worked quite well today. Okay guys, looks like 56 is the best I'm gonna get pulled here. I'm at 55% and I'm not gonna hang around any longer. I don't really need to uh, to get charged up. I've got 10 kilowatts in uh, hours in 11 minutes, as you can see. So I'm gonna unplug it and uh, head back home, but uh, 56 is pretty good. Well, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that overview and impressions of the 2019 Kia Nero EV. Um, my overall summary is, wow, this is a fantastic vehicle, folks. Um, driving around for a couple of days, uh, utilizing some of the interior space, putting some people in it, moving around. Um, it's just been a great experience. It's been a really easy vehicle to drive, get in and go. The range has been phenomenal. I haven't really had an opportunity to drain it much. I, uh, As you saw, I went to the super uh, to ultra-fast charger yesterday in Milton, 
tried to put some juice now it actually the charger itself froze or the, the evse froze and hung the station itself so i, I might have gotten more juice than what showed there uh when i was showing that screen earlier um i don't know i had to actually phone petro and they couldn't even reboot it so i just i unplugged and left and unfortunately nobody could use it after me so something happened there where it froze but you know you saw i was pulling about 56 maybe even 57 by the time i when i unpulled unplugged it I think something to do with that station but getting back to the Nero it's a fantastic car lots of room had my wife and daughter in it drove around very comfortable again a little noisier a little bit more noise as I mentioned than the Leaf and some of the others that I've driven but very comfortable handle the roads well big thumbs up for me now would I buy this over a Model 3 or a Leaf Plus or even the Kona well I haven't driven the Kona but I know that the interior space I've sat in the interior space and played you know and had a chance to experience the sitting inside I like the, the Nero better. It's just that little bit bigger, that few inches longer um, to give it a little bit more space. And I think that that makes a big difference. It's very comfortable in that back seat if you, you haul a couple of people around or some stuff. So I do like it. In a heartbeat, I would get a Nero over the Leaf Plus, a Model 3, uh, a Kona, um, or anything else in that 60 kilowatt uh, club category right now. Um, I just think it's a phenomenal vehicle. It's got everything, and that was one of the reasons why it was my pick for 2019 battery electric vehicle of the year, because it just hits that sweet spot, everything. Good visibility, great visibility, actually, for driving. A little windows even in the uh, the C pillars to give you some extra visibility, the sensors. Um, again, everything was, it's just pretty finessed in this car. Other than the noise a little bit, that's the only thing that I would probably complain a little bit about it. That's a little, again, it's not as quiet as, as mine, but... Other than that, I really couldn't find anything wrong with this vehicle after trying everything, you know, trying uh, traction control, trying adaptive cruise, trying out the lane keeping. It just works really, really well. It's a great car just to get in and go and forget about. I almost forgot that it's an electric car other than the instant torque and being quieter than a normal car. It really is that good. And that's, again, I go back to what I said in the opening that it just looks normal, feels normal and goes other than that instant torque and the benefits that EVs give you. So it's definitely a winner for me and if it's something that's on your list of that you're looking for definitely look at the the narrow EV. i know you know it's going to be hard to get one because of the constraints and the, you know the battery suppliers but i'm really hoping that kia steps it up so five stars i don't really do stars as you guys know i don't ratings it's definitely a buy it's a fantastic vehicle um, I think it's one of the best all electric battery vehicles on the market today from an overall price performance package it gives you everything that you need and, and it's going to last you a long time so congrats i congratulate kia for building for really taking an existing platform and electrifying it but doing it in a great way not giving up interior space very much i think it only gives up about one foot of car cubic feet for storage because of the battery pack it drives better than the ice variants of it and the plug-in hybrid variants it's, it has it's, it's just a nicer look and it just, it's flawless. It really is a really solid vehicle. So congratulations, Kia, for that. Thank you very much again to Kia Canada for loaning me the vehicle and big thumbs up on that. So that's it for the end of the show. Thank you very much for tuning in to episode 51, my review of the Kia Nero EV of the 2019 model. Um, thank you very much for watching as always. And I enjoy comments. Please like, subscribe to the channel. Um, I think most of you know that my goal is to get to 10,000 subs if I can for this year, just to kind of be able to get access to some YouTube stuff. Um, they do workshops, seminars, and all kinds of stuff, uh, but you have to have over 10,000 subs to be able to go into these free things that they offer. So I'm really hoping to be able to, to get more involved in the YouTube side of things and grow this channel. Um, so that's a big plus if you can subscribe. If you haven't, uh, please do. I always enjoy comments, whether positive or, and or negative. I do get some negative. I know I'm not perfect, folks. So please uh, don't be afraid to comment. Anything too negative, of course, I will be taking it off. But uh, thank you for all the feedback. I appreciate it very, very much. And I also appreciate my Patreon supporters. Thank you very much because, uh, you know, you guys really help inspire me and to keep me motivated to continue to grow this channel and to do better and better. So thank you very much again for watching. Uh, all my contact information and the thank you roll for patriots coming up so until the next show please everybody stay safe and i'll see you next time and i'll see you when i see you take care bye bye